City Line's fall premiere week continues with our harvest special. We're embracing the pumpkin. We're showing you how to bring the colors of the season to life for your tablescape. We're going to transition it as the weather does, kind of in three steps. Ben, look forward to see you. Oh. It's squash season, and we've got everything you need to know about these gorgeous fall fruits. You want to store them in an area that's going to be dark, and really room temperature, just below room temperature. Plus, this is the crumble, and to me, it's about the crumble and not the apple. Yeah, I said it. Yep. We're falling into fall flavor with the ultimate apple crumble and taking a deep dive into how wine is made. Look at that juice. Hey, Renee, I only have to do that 100 more times to get one ounce. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. It's all just around the corner. As we get ready to welcome fall, we're getting you in the mood with our City Line Harvest Special. And I've got some friends helping us usher in autumn our Frankie Flowers, Mr. Frank. Here. fall harvest colors. Well, thanks. I Tis like the it. season, you know? It is the season. So I'm a summer girl, but we are heading into fall, and mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Okay. As long as it stays a little bit warm-ish. <laughs> I don't believe you. Right? I'm the like, way you I'm a little said. bit okay with it. But this makes me happy about it, because you can entertain, you can have some fun in yeah. fall, the temperature's a little bit more temperate, you can, you know, chill out a little bit and have those outdoor parties. This is sort of summertime, and we're going to change it to fall. Yeah, let's transition the table. So yeah. what I really wanted to help people with today is, for starters, you don't have to go buy everything brand new just because the season changes. You know what, we can't. No. I just spent all my money on vacation. Right, <laughs> and good for you for that. That's a good yeah. place to spend, I think, right? on your money. So you, if you've got kind of the basics, which, mm -hmm. it, most of us have, I think. You're eating on plates, hopefully, right. <laughs> and again, using cutlery. Um, yes, I will judge you if you're not. Uh, I don't, don't usually, but that I will. So you've got the basics. Your table might, right now, look something along these lines. This is so beautiful. So we've got a botanical theme type mm -hmm. um, tablecloth. Yep. We've got a fresh table arrangement. This happens to be just fresh basil, it you just know. It smells so good. I know, doesn't it? It does. Very nice. Um, I always like it in the middle of a table um, in the warmer seasons. But whatever mm. yours might be, see, whatever your theme is right now in your warm weather type table, yep. sitting in your dining room or outside, you may have dove into the pink trend and you mm -hmm. might have a little bit of pink, pastel napkins, things like that. This is kind of what we're dealing with now. Yes. And we're going to transition it as the weather does, kind of in three steps. Okay. But before we get into that, mm -hmm. let's go over the basics. Okay. So I'm using here, I got all these things from HomeSense. These are beautiful and I, I just love these plates. And as you notice, they're like a light gray. And if yeah. you're someone who doesn't want that stark white plate, because I know it, that's not for everybody, mm -hmm. then I highly recommend a light gray plate. It transitions to every season. Mm -hmm. It goes into every style. You can be modern and more traditional or transitional like these ones. As you can see, they match with all these kind of pastel type colors, but as we go, I'm going to keep the plates the same. Yeah. I'm also going to keep the tablecloth the same. Okay. We're pulling out the mints and the lighter colors now, but stick with me and we'll pull out the other colors a little bit later. Lovely. And just as a quick refresher, we've got our cutlery, and you don't have to go crazy for cutlery. Yeah. You start on the outside on the left with your salad fork and your dinner fork on the mm. inside, and then your knife on the right. Okay, this is just the basics. And then We're do not we going... eat like this? <laughs> no. Well, 
No, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> okay, let's so not. it's really good actually to do a little refresher on these because yeah. it's good to teach just the kids to, just and to, all of to that. Just remind so that us, they know. yeah, we've yeah. been eating burgers in the barbecue right. for a while. <laughs> and same thing, I set the table with stemless wine glasses. They are still nice. absolutely 100% a thing. Yeah. I don't think they're going anywhere, and I love them because they're used for everything. You can put red wine, you can put white wine, you can put mixed drinks, you can put juice, pop, and juice water. water, milk, yeah. you name it, it goes into this glass. Yes. So if you're going to have only one glass, if you're li small space living or just simplified living, Let I recommend, I still highly, highly recommend the stemless wine glass. Yeah, you're always going to feel fancy if you're, if you're drinking a glass of milk. Yeah, yeah, right? it's yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's okay. switch it to so pre-fall or beginning yeah, fall. Yeah, like as the weather warms up. So yeah. we're going to remove the napkins. I'm going to put you to work here. Okay. We're going to remove these. Pass and behind those. us here, we're going to grab some of these. So we're this season, yeah, you can do the napkins, Tracy, and I'll do this. Okay. We'll take this pink pillow off because pink is out for this season. You're gone, Pink. Why, you're Pink? Fired. We like you, but you're out. Okay. So as Tracy's putting on uh, napkins that have that kind of more natural, like stone, bone, yeah. oatmeal. Oatmeal, right? exactly, that organic vibe. Yeah. Um, that's bringing in that kind of warmer tone. I threw down a throw in the chair. That's nice to have. A little bit of texture on the pillow. That's nice. Pillows and throws on dining room chairs. I, know, I get it. Some people are going to say they're not that practical. Yeah. But they look really nice and finish off your room when you're not using the table. If Agreed. you want to remove that when you eat, then go ahead. Yeah. I want a pillow on everything. I like the yeah. little, the, the lower support. lumbar support. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it same makes it thing. a little bit more comfy, right? Yeah. Why not? Oh, Switch comfy. In the, uh... So we're going to take away the fresh basil okay. and we're going to bring in a color that's going to just brighten it up, but darken Ooh, it at the same time. Nice. And yes, I just said two contrasting things. We're going to brighten <laughs> it up because it's a color that's totally different from the uh, tablecloth. Yeah. And we're bringing in what a really hot trend is. It so anchors it. It does, yes. Right? It, it anchors it and it makes it a little bit more deep and it's getting a little bit colder, so it's lovely. Yes. And so as you can see, we're in the warmer tones here. Mm -hmm. But let's take it up a notch and go into our harvest table vibe. Okay. Fair. So we're going to take away... Oh, I'll give you a little tip on this napkin ring, actually. These napkin rings are actually just cra wooden craft rings. They're raw wood. You can paint them. And I got them from Amazon. I need to buy them for a couple of dozen for next to nothing. Beautiful. And they make the perfect napkin rings. I use them all yeah. year round. Good. So now I'll put... And they look fancy. And they do. And you yeah. can paint them if you had like uh, wanted them to match or something if you're crafty. Oh, look so, at these. So as you can see, you're bringing in a darker toned yeah. uh, napkin here. We're embracing the pumpkin. So there's a pumpkin napkin ring. You might already have those from a previous year. She has to do pumpkins this way because she's like <laughs> anti- Cartoony pumpkins. <laughs> You're outing me. I know. Yeah, I'm like you don't. It has to be stylized and yeah. a little bit like not a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah, and sophisticated yeah. way to bring in the pumpkin. But you still want those seasonal flair. And this doesn't necessarily have to be your Thanksgiving table. We're not there yet. Yeah. You can. Have, it's pumpkin season. You right. know. So you can embrace that. Um, at this time of year without it being nice. Thanksgiving season. Now that being said, uh -huh. when Thanksgiving season comes around, oh, if you want to nice. add like these pumpkin motifs, then you go right ahead and maybe your Thanksgiving pillow and you can be set with that. And if you want to go even one shade darker, I you can bring those. in flowers of this deep, deep tone as well. Whatever yeah. kind of floats your boat. I love so it. So see, there wasn't many, few, a few accessories here and there and you've kept yeah. all the major stuff the same. I, no I'm not even sweating. Well, a little bit, but not much. <laughs> Shona, that was so beautiful. I love it. It makes me excited to entertain. I think we're all sort of getting back into the, the habit of entertaining now after many years of not. So thank you yes, for that. You're welcome. Now, if you were uh, watching yesterday, you know it is a very special week on City Line. It is our September swag bag. <laughs> You are Pam. Pam. Okay, um, Pam. Yes. As you can see, yes. there are two humongous gifts in front of you. I see them. Now, no <laughs> pressure, but you are going to pick a gift for you and the entire audience. Okay, but you have to pick which box has the prize. Which one has the big prize? I can't tell you, because then that would just spoil the whole game, right? <laughs> I love how you're immediately trying to cheat. You're my kind of girl. She's trying to look underneath. Okay, so, which one do you want to pick? Do you want Audience? darker pink, light pink? Audience, what do you think? Dark? 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 I agree. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to do a three, two, one, and then you're going to lift up the box, okay? okay? Audience, let's give her a three, two, one. Oh. Oh. A house. We want a house. Mean? Hold on a second. <laughs> Stu, what are they getting? This 
season, entertaining from home is a habit we won't be breaking. But we love to do it for less. That's why we love HomeSense. Their decor, furniture, and home essentials makes it easier to embrace the hosting life for less. Get ready to shop till you drop with your $100 HomeSense gift card. Your couch getting all jealous you can scan the qr code on your screen right now for your chance to win all of today's swag prizes there's lots more to come good luck to you all we're going to break we got more coming up grapes to wine in minutes mine is not done renee you're absolutely right ooh, ooh. wine grapes, my favorite thing to harvest. Renee Sforaza is joining us from the Domain <laughs> to show us how our wine gets from grapes in the vineyard to your actual table, which is so cool. How's it going over there, Renee? It's going great, Tracy. Like you said, I'm at Domain Kalus. I'm here with assistant winemaker, Brooke Husband. Hi, Tracy. And we're gonna be diving into how wine is made. We've been really exploring the winery and the vineyard. You know, they're getting ready to start this latest vintage. So I figured it would be really fun to like make wine from grape all the way to the final wine glass in five minutes. Are you ready? I am so ready to do this in five minutes. And by the way, that's not real life. Don't try and make your wine in five minutes. So I have the same setup here that you have over there. How do we start? <laughs> All right, let's get started. You're gonna follow along with Brooke. She's gonna be doing everything and I'm gonna be describing it to you. So we have our grapes to start with. We have Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in front of you. First thing I want you to do is start taking off some of those Chardonnay berries and putting them into that press. So one by one. There we go. One by one, yep. They're gonna come off one by one. Wine grapes are a little bit different than table grapes, so they're very tiny and really compacted together. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're doing this is because we don't really want that much stem inclusion because it'll change the texture of the wine. Okay, okay, so I have a bunch of them out. I put them into the press. So now, press it down. Okay, ready? Yep. Oh, and that's satisfying. Press down your press, there we go. Yeah. And then we're gonna add it, yeah. yeah. There you go, that sound as it goes in, perfect. And then we're gonna add it into one of those canisters in front of you. We're gonna do some real strong methods here. There we go, look at that juice. Hey Renee, I only have to do that 100 more times to get one ounce. <laughs> Amazing. You do, you do. So also, I'm gonna get you to empty that press out. Just oh. take out that little bit. Okay. Uh, you see there's that little canister at the bottom and pop it back in because we're gonna do the exact same thing for the red wine grapes. Well, you know, I like blended berries, so I didn't clean it out exactly properly, but it's good enough. We're gonna have a That's little- That's fine. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. So let's pick off, <laughs> pick off some red wine grapes and add those in. Okay, so now I'm doing the same with the red um, grapes and I'm doing it just as elegantly as Brooke is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Meanwhile. exactly. Isn't isn't she great at this? She's so very pop good those at it. in there, yeah. and then press down your press again. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the best part, by the way. Oh, it's so there good. There you go. Lots of strong arms. Yeah. Strong arms, and we're gonna Ready? pour it into that canister again. You're gonna see that the color is basically the same. Yeah. I'm like, did I fail that test? No, you didn't. So you're gonna take a couple of berries and just throw them directly into the canister now, okay. into your red wine canister. Okay. And why are we doing that, Renee? It's so that the red wine gets its coloring. So basically, from the start of harvest, you're having the grapes for red and white kick it off differently. White wine uh, is not fermented on the skins and red wine is fermented on the skins. So. As we get these grapes into the canisters, they're gonna start fermenting. There's a little bit of yeast on the outside of the grapes. And what's happening is that yeast is eating the sugars inside the grape juice. 
and they're gonna start fermenting inside these canisters. And you can do it inside stainless steel like we're doing right now, but you can also do fermentation inside barrels, amphora, and a little bit of concrete too. Isn't that so cool? That is very cool. Okay, so now my red wine is actually gonna look like red wine, and we go to the next process where right. I have this teeny tiny little barrel. Yeah. It's very cute. What do I do? <laughs> yes, we had our teeny tiny barrel. So after fermentation, we're getting into aging. So I want you to pour yourself a little sample from the barrel. That's our red wine. Don't mind and if I do. And just leave that aside for a sec <laughs> once you pour yourself a little. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and you can pick up both that red and the white and just like taste them and smell them a little bit. You're going to see that in both these red and white wines, uh -huh. they are not done yet. So barrel aging and aging in general can happen in stainless steel, can happen in amphora, but the wine is not <laughs> completed yet. It doesn't seem very harmonic. Mine is not done, Renee, you're absolutely right. <laughs> uh -uh. It's not done, I know, right? I can give you a bunch of wine and we'll just taste it as we go. So you know what, you can see The white's not bad, sorry to interrupt made. you. The white's not bad, even not done. It's not bad at all. I know, right? But look, you can see the color is different. It's a little bit cloudy. So once this aging process happens, it can be aging for a couple months to almost a year. So we have this whole thing going on from harvest to the grapes fermenting to the aging. That whole process can take a year or more, could be longer or shorter. It depends on what winemakers like Brooke want to do and what they want to create in the final wine. So then we get to our final wines. We have two wines from Domaine Kalos, and these are the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir we've been tasting the whole time. So I want you to grab a glass of the 2019 Tradition Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Both of these wines are done uh, low intervention with natural wild yeast fermentation and they're organic. Mm -hmm. And they've spent about 16 to 18 months in oak. And you can see this final process very harmonic, little bit of toastiness, appley notes, and some minerality on the palate. Very bright. Oh, sorry. This is where I talk. Listen. <laughs> And these are great. We don't, we don't have any more time left, but there's nothing really more to say. They, these are great, and you see now why you might pay more for a wine that has aged. Like, the difference is incredible. Renee, thank you for that lesson. Can we give it up for Renee? Okay. Because I like to share, I'm going to share with them. Time for a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You want to try a little sippy? Chardonnay girl, go from this side of the glass because I already drank some. Take a little sippy. What do you think? It's great. It's very, very oaky, good. yeah? Not bad at all. Good. Coming up, Apple Crumble gets an even more delicious upgrade. It's got complexity. It's so much better than that mushy topping. and nothing tastes better than an apple crumble, I tell you. Here to share one with a salted caramel oat topping, Chef Paul Lillikis. Yes, he did. Okay, this looks phenomenal, but your apple crumble is different than most people's apple crumble. I mean, most yeah. of your recipes are just different just than everyone else's. Bit. It's a little twist, yeah. right? How's this one different? Okay, so you we all know the, the typical crumble or apple crisp comes from the oven. This yeah. is done in two parts and stovetop. Never touches the oven. Never touches the oven! Okay, <laughs> and why don't you want it in the oven? Is there a reason why? Well, you know what? You know, what really grinds my gears what? is when the crumble <laughs> topping is just mush. It turns to absolute yeah. mush. So in, in this, I want to keep the topping crisp and then and just control it, and it's going to be done faster anyway. I love that. That's a great idea. We want the crispy, crunchy yeah. topping and the beautiful apple underneath it. Exactly. So why don't we start by talking about these apples? Yes. Okay. okay. So for pies, Granny Smith and Golden Delicious are great choices because they hold their shape. They, oh, okay. So they don't turn to applesauce. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and they're readily available. Uh -huh. And in order to chop them, mm -hmm. I just want uniform shapes. So you could slice them or you could do chunks. I like to do it like this. That's I nice and easy. I can't really with the with the core. Like I just like flat side, safety first, yeah. and then just like that. 
Beautiful. Nice chunks, because I want to actually taste what I'm eating. I don't want it to be too soft. Do you ever do like just like the thin slices? Or, yeah. Yeah, you've done Sometimes, them that way as well? Yeah, I like those for a tart. Yeah. Um, you know, but in this case, I want, I really want to see those big chunks of it. And I, I want it to that. have a little texture. And do you care about flavor? Like I know they hold their shape, but in terms of flavor from like a Granny Smith or what was the other one you mentioned? Golden Delicious. The Golden Delicious. Do they they serve sort of deliver a different flavor? Well, the Granny Smith has a higher acidity. So yeah. I do like that, especially yeah. when you're combining it with really sweet things. Mm -hmm. um, a Golden Delicious will be a little richer, a little sweeter in general. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do like the tartness of the Granny Smith. Me too. Okay, so we slice them all up. Yep. And then what are we going to do? Okay, so I've already cooked them down. And the beauty of this recipe is it's really simple. You just kind of throw a bunch of stuff into the skillet and let yeah. it cook down. So a little bit of water, a little brown sugar, some lemon juice to balance it, okay. a little bit of salt, and some spices. So, of course, cinnamon, but I've added a little cardamom. So I love cardamom with apple. Oh, it's that's it's beautiful. such a beautiful warming spice. It's deep and yes. it, it says fall. It yep. says autumn for sure. It that's adds gorgeous. a whole other level to it. And yeah. then I just cook this down. There's uh -huh. a little flour in there just to thicken it up. And nice. then you can take it as far as you want. I don't want it to be totally soft. Yeah. And that's it. You can turn it off. You could do this ahead of time. And now we make the crumble topping. Okay, let's talk about the crumble. So what do we do that this so this doesn't go to mush? It just turn it off. Just turn, turn it off. Turn it off. Leave it. You can cover it. You could do this the day before. Oh, beautiful. it's totally fine. Okay. So into a hot skillet, yeah. I'm combining some brown sugar. This is the most important part, by the way, because this is the crumble, and to me, it's about the crumble and not the apple. Yeah, I said it. Yep. I yep. want all the recipes with a little bit of breadiness. Carb. I want the bready bready. Yes. Like. <laughs> me too. Yeah. It is important. It's so, really great for my hot flashes, yeah. let me tell you. It will soothe temporarily. The wine help too. <laughs> so we're just mm -hmm. cooking this brown sugar down until it bubbles with a okay. little bit of water. And then we're just going to swirl in some butter. You okay. can use salted or you can add butter. But you can smell it already. All caramel is is fat cooked down with sugar. That's why we like it. Yeah, so it smells, <laughs> it doesn't take long. Yeah. You just want it to bubble. It almost smells like maple syrup. It's got that molasses it to it. And now, you want to go ahead and put the butter in? I just don't want to screw this up. Is there is this finicky at all? You know, it could burn. Keep, keep stirring <laughs> okay. it. It can burn. So it doesn't take long. Yeah. But if you're, if you're feeling like it's smoking, you can always just lift take it, it off. off the burner. OK. OK, so basically what we're looking for is just a good, rapid bubble. Yeah, and like that? Yeah, like that, and then wait till it moves a little bit around the edges. See, it's coming up, it's coming up to temperature. It's growing, yes. And essentially what we're gonna do is create a caramel that will cover all the flakes of our rolled oats. Okay. So let's start swirling in our butter. Right. This butter is already pretty soft. And is that what you're looking for? Does it matter if you use cold butter or it, room temperature butter? It, or? I mean, it will just take a little bit longer for it to melt in. Okay, all right. And so it doesn't matter. Yeah, not really, not okay. really. And certainly, this is pretty Gosh, forgiving. That smells good, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, and because I'm using unsalted butter, I'm yeah. gonna add a little bit of sea salt in there because I want that nice. sea salted caramel flavor. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, and then as soon as that butter is completely mixed, mixed in. in. You can see the colors change. Mix, mix. We're adding our oats. These are just rolled oats. Nothing special about the oats. Is there any oat kind of oat that you don't want to use? Like you wouldn't use a steel cut oats, right? Uh, no, no, I just, <laughs> just you, honestly, just use a simple old fashioned oat, rolled oat that you would use for your morning oatmeal. Yeah. And then fold it in. Yeah. And then remove it from the heat because the residual heat will now toast the oats a little bit. Oh, but gosh. essentially, it's like we're making a brittle. Yeah. So every flake is getting a nice little layer of that salted caramel. So and you when want to this coat it all, but how uh, how do you know when you're done that phase? Do you want it to be kind of a little bit on the on the hard side? Or? It's going to be hard. It's okay. going to be pretty hard. Yeah. Right now, it's still a little soft because it's hot. As soon as it cools, it turns to this. So. Oh, it looks like almost granola. It's like granola. Very and nice. I really want you to taste it. Yeah. Because oh, okay, no problem. It's got it's got complexity. It's mm -hmm. so much better than that mushy topping. Okay, yeah. okay we're running out of time. That's it. Now we take it. Oh we, my god, that's good. We top it right before serving. Mm-hmm. And that's it. A then little, what do we do, chef? Eat it. You share it with but your family. But what did you add in here? What did you add in here? Big old ice cream right oh, on top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, to. I'll do this for you. How about that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like it? Give it out. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Two-part apple crumble. Amazing.
Tastes incredible. I know you want the recipe. It's on CityLine.tv. Thank you, Chef. And before we go Thank to break, you. how about some more September swag? prizes for you this week. I am so excited for you. This one is going to be no exception, but I don't want to steal all the glory. I feel like I need a little bit of help in the audience. Who would want to come up here and help me? Just put up your hand if you feel comfortable. Come on up here, yellow. You come on up here. Watch your step, baby. Good, good, good. And what is your name, my friend? I'm Karen. Karen, you're going to play a little game that we're calling Swag Drop. So I'm going to give you this ball, okay? Now this ball, you're going to drop it like it's hot. And wherever it lands at the bottom, we will let you know the prize that you and the entire audience is going to win. Are you ready to do the swag drop? Give her a three, two, one. Go for it, Karen. Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? It landed. Get ready to mix it up with the new Vitamix Propel 510. It's the perfect blend of power with settings for smoothies, hot soups, and frozen desserts. Enjoy your new Vitamix 510, valued at $650. win you all a Vitamix? Yeah! Every single one of you in the audience is going to go home with your Vitamix. I love mine. You did very well. Purple was obviously the color. Thank you for that. And we're going to break. We got so much more coming up. Coming up, it's squash season. We're carving out everything you need to know next. Let's squash that right now. <laughs> <laughs> just about sweater weather. It's also squash season. So here with everything we need to know is Frankie Flowers himself. Dancing. He's in the house, in yeah. the studio. Hardest working man in showbiz, I tell you. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> Gord to see you. Oh, are you gorgeous? Yes, oh, you are gorgeous. It. We could do this all day. Oh yeah, let's squash that right now. <laughs> Different yeah. varieties and, you know, flavors, sizes, all the things when it comes to squash. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about squash. So first let's dive into the difference between summer squash and mm -hmm. what are typically known, even the spaghetti here, is a winter squash. So okay. the difference between the two, do you know? I have no idea. One's beige and one's green. <laughs> I don't know. So your summer squash, which is typically things like your zucchini, even cucumbers. This is cool. This is a white cucumber oh. that grew in my garden because it was in shade. And because oh. it was in shade, it didn't turn green. It actually turned white. Does but, it taste the same? Uh, it tastes the same. Oh, really kind of so cool, cool, too. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, really a cucumber is a variety of squash and then zucchini. So we can eat the skin. Yeah. We can, they're easy to cut. You know, you can go through and just... Go, I gotta get my is that easy thing. to oh, cut? Oh yeah, this one here is easy to cut. It's you a monster. Like that. So you were okay. asking me, me about size too with zucchini as well. Yeah. You know, the larger size that they get into, they're a little bit more tougher to cut. Yeah. Uh, but the smaller the size, they're more tender and more fruitful and more just tastier for you to eat. Uh, yeah. Winter squash. The reason okay. why they're called winter squash. Yeah. Any idea? Look at how I could just put that back together. I don't know. They like, like winter more than summer. Uh, they can store during the winter. So they're really okay. long lasting. So examples of winter squash, of course, your spaghetti squash, which doesn't taste like spaghetti. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. I went through a phase where I was eating a lot of spaghetti squash. I'm kind of over it now. Yeah, when you cook spaghetti squash, we take the seeds out and we'll cook it down. Yeah. This will strip out just like spaghetti noodles. Right. That's kind of the idea. Yeah, you, you take them out and it's supposed to be, oh, look, it's just like pasta. It's not like pasta. <laughs> no, it's not like like zucchini pasta too. Is it's you not know, pasta. I'm actually okay with the zucchini pasta. Are but you? No, the, the squat, the spaghetti squash now. Okay, another okay. example right of a winter squash are the acorn squash, mm -hmm. which we I love super those. super love. And then you have your butternut squash too, is another yes. example. Uh, if you're growing them and you're wondering, are they ready? 
Are they How ready? How do you know? So as soon as you go, and try to take your fingernail there and try to pierce that okay. with your fingernail. I can't, I can right. barely. Yeah, so that's usually when they're ready is when they're tough. The outer side oh, is tough. you want tough. them to be tough, okay. You want them to be tough. You yeah. also know that there's a little bit of dye back on some of the stems and foliage that are there. Yep. You'll always see that many winter squash will always have their stems left on the top, right? Yep. That'll actually make them last a little bit longer. Okay. If we're storing them, we want to store them in an area that's going to be dark and really room temperature, just below room temperature, okay. and they'll last. We can make these decorations, just yeah. like the gourds. Gourds are not edible. That's the difference between a gourd and a... And a squash, yeah, look squash. at this gourd, right? It like, looks like an octopus. Do you believe in aliens? Look at this. <laughs> like, yeah. it's so gross, I love it. But yeah. that's, that's why, you know, people love these for decorations and stuff. They look all warty and amazing. They, and they're really just that harvest kind of basket. And they're, they're funky, they're fun. Yeah. You know, we can hollow some of these Gross. out and make them into bird feeders and or bird houses. Oh, cute. So there's many different things that you can do. And then this is just another example of a different type of squash that's out there. Very but cute. really with pie pumpkins as well. A pie pumpkin is just a smaller pumpkin. Yeah. But the reason why a pie pumpkin is different from others when you see them, you can see there's just a little bit more flesh that we have on that pie pumpkin that's there. So in order to make pies, they're a lot better for you to do that. Uh, okay, those, now, those are better for pies. Oh yeah, way better for pies than the bigger uh, squash, the bigger pumpkins. Forgive me, that can be either orange and or white. Yeah. These guys here really don't have this same kind of fleshiness that you want for that beautiful pie pumpkins that's out there as well. Okay. So I want to give you a really good tip. Really okay. good tip is is me. that I love squash. Like mm -hmm. you, you're kind of we're talking about this, and you're like, eh, right? Listen, I can I can love them or leave them with the squash, but you are like you are a lover of vegetables. Yes. And are these vegetables, by the way? Uh, yes, indeed, they're not. They're not. <laughs> yes, indeed, they are not Choose. vegetables. So anything, so all squash, they, how they grow, mm -hmm. they bloom. Yeah. There's a male and female flower. Okay. And they go, hey, how you doing? <laughs> then what happens is they form that fruit. So anything that actually a has fruit. a flower with a seed in it is yes. a fruit. So you, did you zucchini. know that it's fruit? Oh, well, you and the friend did, Smarty. Yeah. She's like, absolutely, I knew it was, I did know it was fruit. I didn't know that. So yeah. I, I would not include this in the list of fruits. But anyways, you love your fruits and you love your vegetables. So you have been friends with squash for some time. Me and squash were just like so tight. tight. Yes. So the key about squash is if you ever cut like acorn squash and you go to cut them, they're yeah. really, like we were just showing with your fingernail, they're really tough. kind of tough. And sometimes with that knife, you're just like, right like super tough that's there mm -hmm. so what you can do is you can go and you can either take a fork or a knife and first you want to pierce them yeah and then you're going to put it in a microwave for about three to four minutes okay the reason why we're piercing is so that it can allow some of the air to get out and some of the moisture to get out yeah. if not it will explode okay <laughs> so, so and when it's out after four minutes feel, it's going to be a feel. little now oh, it's so now hot. you should put your nail put your yeah. nail now like here we'll show it right there put your nail trying now. to ruin my nails no nope. oh it goes all the way in See? See? That's terrible for me. Yeah. <laughs> now you know that's going to yeah. be really easy. So to cut this, just to be safe, we always want to just cut a little bit off the bottom. That'll yeah. make that nice and flat. Yes. Go one oh, on that's each so side, just like this. You. Yes. Really quick, just like this. Uh huh. And then there you go. See how quick that was? That was Way okay. easier. Very nice. That was a good lesson. Um, you're so bored at this. <laughs> Let's go to break. We got more coming up. <laughs> From orchard to table, everything you need to know about our favorite forbidden fruit, apples. Listen, the photo ops for the gram are unlimited. <laughs> Okay, that was Chef Paul. So it was one way to make the most of apple season, but Shona's back now with more ideas because tis the season to grab those apples yes. and have some fun with it, and it can be a whole experience. It apple picking. And we are so, for starters, I love fall. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's my favorite season. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, I like all okay. four seasons, but I fall cozy, war, what's your first? Summer. Summer. Yeah, I could have guessed that. Girl. I could have guessed that, I could have guessed that. So <laughs> one of the really, really, really terrific things that we can do at this time of year in the fall is yeah. sell all things apple. Mm -hmm. And we're so lucky living here in Canada, we have access to so much produce and even if you live in an urban center, it's not that far to get to farmland yeah. or to growing areas to have a day trip. I mean, pack a picnic, have a day trip, and hit a farmer. 
flower stand, That's you know, right. or an orchard, an apple orchard, and go apple picking. Yeah. And listen, the photo ops for the gram are unlimited, so <laughs> you're going right. to have content for years. You yeah. absolutely are. Like, yeah. I'm a big apple girl. I have an apple every single day, usually a gala apple every single day. I love that. I love them. I, they're portable. They're easy. Yeah. They crunch, which yeah. I love. Yeah. So there's so many varieties out there uh, that you can have some fun with, and you've brought a few varieties here. It is, and one thing I really, really want to encourage you, when you go to the uh, orchard or to the grower to the farm stand, wherever you're buying your apples, or even if you're just going to the grocery store yeah. at this time of the year, take a look. Look, if you have the access to talk to the grower, talk to the people that work in the farms. Yeah. For starters, see the amount of work that goes into it. Pick an apple off the tree. Like, know where your food comes yes. from. We, we all are far more interested in that more than ever. Yeah. And so it'll really change your perspective. And when you're part, when you're doing that, whether it's, like I said, at an orchard or the grocery store, mm -hmm. go outside the box and experiment with different apples. There are oodles and oodles and oodles of different kinds of apples, and they can be so different. Yeah, they are very different. Yeah. I went through a Granny Smith phase, and it's like, who was I that at that yeah. time in my <laughs> yeah. life? Very tart. I think I liked that. Maybe I needed to be like slapped across the face every day. And now I've moved to Galilee. So, yeah, there's so many different flavors that you can get and different textures. Different textures, right? different flavors, different sweetness, different tartness like yeah. you spoke on, different different uses. Some mm -hmm. apples lend a little bit better for, you know, baking, let's say, for yes. making apple crumble. Although I'm not a stickler on that. In my opinion, when you're cooking apples, you want to kind of break them down anyway. So yeah. choose the apple that you love. But Absolutely. experiment with them. But experiment and have some yeah. fun with them. Okay, so let's talk about storing them. Yes, so one of the wonderful things about apples, they have a really, really long lifespan. They sure They're do. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. So if you do have the opportunity to go somewhere and you want to buy them in a little bit of bulk, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And as long as you put them in your apple crisp, or, I mean your apple crisp. Uh -huh. <laughs> as apple long crisp? as you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put them in your uh, crisper in your fridge. Those okay. drawers are there for a reason. Yeah. And actually, a lot of refrigerators now have little additions. And if yours doesn't, you can buy them like, third party mm -hmm. little things you can put in that are um, packages that help remove the gas that the fruits all and that. vegetables to make them last longer yeah but the tip is good. if you don't want to go that far if you want to store them for a long time they need to be cold yeah and you want to put a barrier between each of the apples so with a paper towel or a tea towel what mm -hmm. have you just wrap them up so they have their own little individual nook. Yes. And you're doing that so the gases don't go to each other and accumulate and then make them go bad faster. And not only do you not want apple to apple getting too involved with each other, <laughs> you don't want your apples getting involved with anything else. Like, they'll ruin everything, right? Yes, they can, yes. If you put your carrots there beside them, they'll ruin your carrots. Like, they, everyone's, everything's, everyone's got to have their own Everyone space. Everyone needs their own <laughs> space, their happy bed. Meanwhile, put them to bed. I need you all to know that I buy the a big bag of apples and I put them all in my fridge in the bag. So I'm but telling you what I don't do. But like, you know, I do it wrong. You probably do what most people do though. So I now just leave you know, it in the bag and now it's Now you wrong. know a little better. If, well, you eat yours so quickly that it's I, not an issue, but if you're someone yeah. who doesn't, then now you know how to make them last that much longer. Totally. It's yeah. a smart thing to do because also, hello, expensive. Do not Ugh. waste your food. It's too yes, much money. Very, very. Yeah. Um, so definitely separating them is a really good uh, tip. And you've got yes. all, a bunch of different ways to use your apples. Yeah, and so also when you're experimenting, you know, you're dipping your toe into different types of apples. Also think of cooking. I mean, listen, head to the City Line website. We've got recipes oh, so uh, plenty. And look at ones that use apples, whether mm -hmm. it be, yes, you will go ahead and make that apple pie. Yes. I mean, you make that pie and love it and put all your heart and soul into it. I'm not going to say don't make an apple pie. Actually, mm -hmm. my husband, Greg, would be very upset if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pie guy. Yeah. Um, but think outside the box. You know that de, uh, um, dehydrator? Dehydrator? Yeah. I almost said dehumidifier. <laughs> you know that? Uh, thanks same, for that. Same. Yeah. You know that dehydrator you got as a gift, maybe a Christmas yeah. gift, and you did the one or two things with it, you don't know what else? Yeah. Do apples. They last forever. They're a super sweet treat. Buy the really sweet apples. Yes. They're a great treat. They last for a long, long time. And, and all apple the extra. When you buy. Yeah, apple chips, exactly. Think about chutneys and relishes, yes. things like that jams mm -hmm. even or and then go savory like like cider braised short ribs or Ooh. or something along those lines yeah, you know that so good. really like give it a google jump on the website and yes. look up get inspired lastly you can also drink your apples yes apple right. fresh, cold pressed apple cider hot hot apple cider by the fire and yeah. even adult version of apple ciders hard ciders they're called yeah and they're made from apples too and they just have alcohol in them so you can enjoy them all sorts of different ways. Any way, way you want, in a pie or in your alcohol. I yep. love it, Shona. Very nice. 
Go and enjoy your apples, and we are going to break, but we'll be right back. Shine bright with City Life. It is a vibe. For a fresh take on fashion. That one's got my name on it. Food. These ingredients are screaming spring. And decor. Ah, pick this whole thing up and put it in my living room. It's the perfect way to brighten your day. Literally light up your morning. Wow is right, honey. Wow is right. City Life. Weekdays. Only on City TV. Surprises and unbelievable surprises. Are you ready for this? Head to citylight.tv slash tickets and see the show you love come to life. every last drop out of them. So Sabina, you've got a question you'd like to ask Frank. What would you like to ask? Yes, him? Frankie, I wanted to ask for a raised planter. Is it okay to just switch out half of the soil rather than changing all of it from year to year? Huh. Great question. Uh, if you had disease, let's say you have powdery mildew, uh, even some black spot, then you would want to change most of the soil, out, all the soil out. But if you didn't, you could only just remove a third and just kind of freshen up the top of it and save that soil. So if it's disease, you had issues, change it all. If not, you just kind of put a little bit of a fresh soil on the top. Oh, that's so good. So much cheaper, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, can I, since you got a question in, do you want to come up there with me? Sure. I'm going to get you to do something for me. without doing maybe a little bit more sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, why don't you go on the other side? Okay, there Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Now we've got here this, it's called the swag switch. When you hit the swag switch, it's going to let the wheel of prizes happen and you're going to see it go around and around and where it stops is gonna be a prize for you and the entire audience, no pressure. No. Want a pan that can do everything? Then you want Killen's Italian-made non-stick everything pan. It replaces nine pieces of cookware. It's valued at $150. And you're all going home with one. screen right now to enter to win all of today's swag prizes that's right all of today's swag prizes good luck to you lots more to come tomorrow i want to say a big thank you to our experts for bringing the fallout come on in here come on in here.